Hello, hello, hello. It's Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And yes, Alyssa, it's your fault. Also, Rocky Lennon. Also, something else that I found. I don't know. I can't remember. This is one of those... This is one of those days where I grab a clip here and there throughout the day, and I have a bunch of other stuff interspersed, and then I forget what's in the the stream. But, but you know, it's awesome. Or I wouldn't have, or I wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> Let's get this party started, shall we? So I do have to. Well, let me start the recording here. I do have to advise you that these proceedings are live streamed to YouTube for public access. Any other recordings are not allowed. And when it does come time, sir, to get your personal information, I do stop the live stream so that does not go out over the internet. So just be aware of that, please. Again, your full name, Douglas Jamer Jackson Jr. Is that correct? I told you I believe so. All right, thank you. And your appearance, please, Ms. Schroeder. Thank you, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Aaron Schroeder on behalf of Mr. Jackson uh, Jr. for purposes of his arraignment only this morning. He has. All right, thank you. This is file 24 00873. Happy birthday, Andrew. FY. Sir, this is a complaint alleging on or about. February 22nd of 2024 at the location of 930 Cleveland Avenue, City of Lansing, Ingham County, Michigan. I'm going to get out of this stuff so you can do some of your, if you can't, or you, or you could do it anyway, couldn't you? All right. All right. So count one alleges, sir, that you did break and enter or did enter without permission a dwelling located at 930 Cleveland, and while entering, present in or exiting, did commit an assault, and while entering, present in or exiting the dwelling, Tamara Stewart was lawfully present therein. Contrary to law, that is a felony. Maximum penalty, 20 years and or $5,000. A consecutive sentence, may be imposed for any other conviction arising out of the same transaction. There is a count two alleging that you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon the following person, Tamara Stewart. Contrary to law, that is a misdemeanor. Maximum penalty, sir, 93 days and or $500. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750.506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Count three alleges that you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon the following person, Tarika Matthews. Also contrary to law, a misdemeanor. Maximum penalty, sir, 93 days and or $500. Again, a consecutive sentence may be imposed under law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Additionally, there's a count four alleging that you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon the following person, Olivia Turner. Also contrary to law, that is a misdemeanor that carries a maximum penalty of up to 93 days in jail and or a $500 fine. Also with a consecutive sentence that may be imposed under law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Additionally, sir, there is an habitual offender third offense notice on the complaint because you have uh, two prior felony convictions, the maximum penalties may be enhanced from what I originally told you. So do you understand the charges and the maximum penalties, Mr. Jackson? No, can you repeat all of that over again? I cannot, but I can tell you the easy way to do it. The first charge is a home invasion, first degree at 930 Cleveland, and that's a felony maximum 20 years and or $5,000. And count two, three, and four all indicate assaults or assaults and batteries against Tamara Stewart, Tanika Matthews, and Olivia Turner with the maximum penalty of 93 days and or $500. Do you understand that, sir? Can you say the last part over again? 
Sir, I just said it twice. Are you telling me you don't understand the words I'm telling you? Um, it's hard, hard to understand, period. Why is that? I don't know. I'm having a difficult time in here. Um, There's a lot going on in this screen. It's blurry and sketchy, so I don't know. Okay. Well, you have four charges. Three of them are misdemeanor assault and battery. The other charge is a home invasion. Do you understand that? I believe so. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. Then, uh, Ms. Schro Schroeder, do you have any indication that this gentleman might not be understanding? Did you need to speak with him? I... It appears he's been arraigned previously with us, and I don't see anything in the notes about problems previously, but is there an issue with the polycom, sir? Uh, I think so. I don't know. You can carry on, though. I can see you clearly, sir. Okay, that's fine. As long as you can see me. Okay. Now, you have rights, Mr. Jackson. You have the right to plead guilty not guilty or stand mute you have the right to a trial by a judge or a jury not and at that trial you can present or confront witnesses if they would not appear the court can order them to do so you also have the right to a lawyer if you cannot afford one one can be appointed for you at court expense do you understand these so far not guilty i'm going to trial okay you also are presumed innocent, and if you are found guilty, it must be beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand that, sir? Mr. Jackson, do you understand what I'm telling you, sir? I didn't okay. the last part. There's, you have the right to a lawyer. You cannot afford one. One can be appointed for you at court expense, and you are presumed innocent. If you are found guilty, it must be beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand that, Mr. Jackson? I understand I'm innocent, yes. Okay, we're going to get you, when we mail you the notice to appear, we're going to also mail you a, a copy of the advice of rights so that you can reread that and make sure that you understand. Uh, there are three more rights that I want to cover. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or write can be used against you, and you always have the right to have a lawyer present with you at any time you are questioned. Do you understand that? Mr. Jackson, you have to speak out loud, sir. You just told me to remain silent. I said you have the right to remain silent. Absolutely, you're correct. But do you understand those rights? All right, let the court acknowledge that the gentleman is nodding his head up and down, which would in a thumbs up, which would indicate that he understands. Like I said, we're going to get you a copy of that uh, with a copy of your notice to appear. Now, uh, Ms. Schroeder, uh, is he applying for an attorney? <laughs> Yes, yeah, sure, Your Honor, it appears from the notes from Mr. Silverthorne, who is, attorney, is an attorney on other files he has currently right now, that uh, that is the plan. Okay, very good. So, Mr. Jackson, you have two hearing dates. We're also going to send this to you in the Ingham County Jail today. Your probable cause conference is scheduled for Thursday, April 4th. That is at 1.30 p.m. The next hearing, which is the Preliminary exam is the following Friday, April 12th at 9.30 a.m. Both of the hearings are with Judge Buchanan and we are uh, requiring an in-person appearance for both of those hearings. So we will send that notice to appear uh, to the Ingham County Jail today. Okay, now, uh, Ms. Schroeder, do you have a current address for? And I oh, believe wait, he more. also has a hold out of circuit court. I would ask the court to 
set some type of low cash surety or 10% bonds, we can earn credit on this file. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So Mr. Jackson, the court does review your criminal history, reviews your ties of community, your employment status, et cetera, uh, amongst uh, your, your criminal history, does allege some prior convictions, how far are you, you going have, back? Does my criminal history always want to hang over my head? Because if that's the case, then I don't know what to tell you. Because, like, like if you're going off criminal history, then you probably should go back to the age of 15 or so or 17. So if you're going back that far on criminal history. She'll go back just as far as she feels like. You have prior convictions. It's not going to go well for you. Then Okay. Okay. Yep, we don't have to say anything else, sir. I am going to remind you that you are being recorded. You do have some hey, well, recent cases history. that, I, sir, sir, this is my turn. Oh, okay. I thought it was you do have some recent turn. cases in in uh, that are alleging violent behavior. You are certainly presumed innocent on those charges. Uh, you're presumed well, innocent as well on this. But given the totality of the cases before you, I am concerned about the safety, not only of the complaining witnesses, but for the public in general. The court is going to set a 25000 cash surety bond with conditions. Don't miss any court dates. Don't violate any state or local laws while you're on the bond. Don't miss any court and dates. Is that all? I don't think you can well, let me any... finish, then I might take your question, sir. But if you interrupt, I'm not going to have time to do that because I have other things. The only question I have so, is that all? Is that all? I'm not finished yet, sir. So don't Are miss any getting... court dates. Right, don't violate all? any state or local laws. Right, do not possess, purchase, right, or consume any alcohol all? or controlled substances without a prescription. No out-of-state um, travel, you know, sir, without permission me, from the court. No firearms, ammunition, or you know, dangerous you know, weapons. You also you know, are to that. report to pretrial services if you are released. And you are not to have any contact or assaulted behavior towards Tamara Stewart, Tarika Matthews, no, and mother. Olivia Turner. That's that means you cannot have any contact with these individuals. Is this all? Is that all? Well, I'm not done yet, sir. You cannot have any contact with these individuals. Okay, I don't want that any contact with them. I don't calling, want any contact writing, with them. Is this paging, all? texting, bye -bye. electronic bye -bye. communications bye -bye. of any kind. Bye -bye. Can't have bye -bye. anybody else contact them on your behalf. And no threatening, harassing, or molesting behavior cool. towards Fine. them that or all. anyone else. And you may Can not leave? go within 2,000 feet of where Can they leave? are located Can at leave? any time. Can I'm leave? also going to order leave? a GPS Can tether, leave? sir, with 2,000 foot leave? exclusion zones to not have Can any leave? contact. Ms. Schroeder, did you have anything Can else leave? for the record? Can no, Your Honor. Thank you. Can all right. Leave? You're all done, sir. Can Can Thank well you. Bye. Thank I'll you. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Okay, Ms. Schroeder, um, that's it with me today. <laughs> Have a great rest of the day. I found him here. Where I was he? Was he? He was out there in the corner. In the corner. What would you say? He was out at that corner. He was out there Good help. It's oh, watch out. Grandpa mumbles here, tries to get into it with uh, Judge Stevens, and it, it doesn't go well. Oh, uh, we have two cases here, sir 24 CR 225 and 226, the state of Texas versus Lawrence Caleb. That's you. Yeah. That's you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you were charged with uh, second degree felonies, two of them. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, there's well, nothing. Well, there's nothing funny about these well, charges. Well, that's right. The wrong people told you about what was going on with you. They took up just a lot of people that were violent doing it to you, sir. The indictments, a grand jury, not me, a grand jury indicted you. A group of twelve people listened to evidence and indicted you in two cases. Twelve. You, yeah, the grand jury, the grand jury who decides what charges and felonies should be rendered. 
These are two second-degree felonies. You're looking at up to 40 years in prison. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to explain. Uh, uh, this isn't trial. This is one thing at a time. It, it states it states here that you pulled a gun out on two people and pulled the trigger three times at them, which is like Russian roulette, playing what we call Russian roulette, where people think they're about to get killed. And police, you're going to interrupt me? The police came out, investigated, and this grand jury indicted you. So this is these are very serious accusations. This man is uh, your attorney. I would you know, urge you to you know to pay attention to what he has to say. But uh, you are charged with a very two very serious offenses. So it's important you handle this in the right way. This is the first appearance, and I'm going to be asking Mr. West what you want to do in these cases next. Your Honor, I'd like to set another announcement to all get to give me and Mr. Boyce some time. We've talked about it real quickly. It's kind of going over the basic facts of it. We need a little more time to, to discuss, go over the discovery, give my clients, go over everything that are resolved. All right, what is an announcement date? We're setting into May for announcements, Judge, May 29th. Okay, that's... Well, that's that's plenty. That's that's, that, that's we are, eight weeks. Is that all we can solid. do? Solid. All right. Uh, don't don't commit a, a crime while you're on bond, or your bond would be revoked, and you'd have to stay in jail until we disposed of these cases. Do you understand? Can I ask you any questions from you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't ask you anything about anything that I can. I can tell you, sir. Only one of us can talk at a time. This lady has to take everything down. I, are you going to keep talking? You're going to get a chance to speak, but the rules say the court has to say certain things. And we, Now, you might find this, and I don't mean to insult you at all, Mr. Caleb, but we have rules in this room of decorum, and she can only take one person talking at one time. She can't take two people talking over each other. She's the court reporter. And if she doesn't do her job, the court, the highest court in the land will make sure that whoever prevented her from doing that is going to be in trouble. So I don't want to be the one in trouble. That's why I keep saying don't interrupt. You're going to have a chance to speak. But we learned not to interrupt people when we were a children. Okay. All right. Did you want to say something? This is your opportunity, but be careful. You don't want to say anything that might you know, be used against you as evidence. Go ahead. Sir, sir. when I was in, in that trial with one of those people we were speaking to, can I speak to you about it? What He's your lawyer. Okay. Maybe that's not a good idea what because this isn't the trial. Hold on. This is a trial. Yes, sir. We're not here for the trial. And I'm not going to dismiss the case, no matter what you say. So whatever you say, you don't want to say something that, look at this man over here, Mr. Kayla. He's the prosecutor, this guy. Look over here. This man, he's the prosecutor. And if you say something that could hurt you, he could use that in evidence against you. That's why you want to talk to him before you say anything. Because she's taking it all down. Yes, this isn't this isn't the trial. This isn't the trial. This is just a preliminary hearing. He'll be able to relay all that back to us. Yeah, everything that you tell him, he'll be able to relay. Right. To us. I think the best thing is just get a reset, and we'll see y'all back in uh, eight weeks. Okay. Thank you. John, is that it for you? No, I've got two more. We're not going to have three. I don't see your name on there. Uh, okay. Are you on the other docket? Oh, I'm also on the other docket too. I, I left it just a little bit more, but look how long it takes Grandpa to clue in and clear out. All right, and yeah. Go ahead and take care of those. Yeah, he's on the other docket because on the announcer docket that we've not gotten to yet. I have uh, David Moley. That's all I have. Wait, in the audience. So, sir, David, sir, is it Mo? Can you just sign right yeah, here? Yes, sir. I don't uh, believe that he Sorry, is. We, we believe he might be in federal custody. We can't confirm that. But. 
Okay, Rocky sent me this, and I ju- I saw, I've seen about a, a minute of it total just spot checking it. I, I I'm not sure because I haven't seen all of it, but I I'm shocked at what I think occurs. Thatcher and any odd that works. Okay, good. I need you to please unmute and then raise your right hands. You and each of you swear or affirm the testimony given in this case to be the truth. Yes. Mr. Hatcher? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. And, Your Honor, on this case, we filed a motion to confirm arrears. Um, the parties do not agree on whether or not direct payments should be credited towards their arrearage. Um, so I'll go ahead and call the party since it's contested. Very well. Um, the state calls the mother Dominique Arnaud. Ma'am, could you state your full name? Dominique Arnaud. Okay. Um, and ma'am, um, I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see a copy of the pay record involved in this case. Um, do you see the pay record? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's between Dominique Arnaud and Keon Hatcher. Um, is that correct? Correct. And does this look like a true and accurate copy of the pay record involved in your case? Just give me a moment while I look over this. And I'll scroll down to the bottom so you can see what's owed as of um, as of yesterday. Is this showing payments or what is this showing exactly? So um, where it says amount applied, that's showing payments. Where it says balance, that's showing the balance of what's owed. Does that make sense? Okay, I see it. Hold on. Oh, this is the one that's made through OEG. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Um, so, ma'am, um, on this case, um, it shows that the father owes $16,217.55 as of yesterday, March 26, 2024. Um, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the state offers a copy of the pay record as states exhibit A. A and B, man. Okay, and ma'am, are you asking for a judgment on that full amount? Yes. And ma'am, um, are you asking that the father pay that off at um, $200 a month until it's paid off? Yes. Okay, and are you asking that the father be responsible for court costs as billed? Yes. Okay, and ma'am, are you comfortable with your address being included in the order or do you not want it included in the order? You can include it. Okay, you're okay with him having it? Yes. Okay. Um, and ma'am, I'm gonna share my screen again so that you can see a copy of an affidavit of direct payments. Do you see this copy of the affidavit of direct payments? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom um, to show um, what is presumably um, from you, uh, Dominique Arnaud. Uh -huh. um, so this affidavit of direct payment shows total direct payments of $17,550. Ma'am, is this um, an affidavit that you made? I had made that under duress. Okay. And can you explain to the court um, the circumstances of like when you filled this out and why you filled it out? Yes, we had agreed of an outside custody um, situation outside of the order to where he was going to get my daughter for two months. And um, that that paper was given to him just to like, if, if anything, for him to allow me to get my daughter back um, because I apparently I, I waived my rights since I let her go to Canada and I did not abide by the order as told by my attorney. So I, I was able to give that paper. I sent it via text and then 
um, didn't plan on doing anything with that document. Okay, so you did not intend to give him credit for seventeen thousand five fifty dollars. Right. Okay, and did you send this into the state to, to the child support office? No, not at all. Okay, but you believe the father may have sent it in. Yes. Okay. Um, so, ma'am, should the father get credit for any direct payments? No. Um, has he made direct payments to you for child support? No. Okay. So you're just asking for a judgment on the full amount owed as of yesterday, $16,217.55? Yes, correct. And you're asking for that to be paid off at $200 a month until it's paid off? Correct. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to tell the court, ma'am? No, I think it's all included. Thank you. Yeah, my affidavit was a lie, but now everything I'm saying is true. I, I just want I just want everyone to uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, pass a witness. Um, the state calls the father, Keon Hatcher. Mr. Hatcher, could you state your full name? Uh, Keon Terrell Hatcher. And sir, what's the name of the child involved in this case? Zoe Moore Hatcher. And how old is the child? Uh, five. Okay. And sir, did you see the pay record that shows the amount that the state shows that you owe um, on child support arrears? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I'm just going to share my screen again so that you can see it. So it shows that you owe $16,217.55. Um, is that correct? Is it correct or do I see it? Do you see it? Yes, I see it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and sir, do you believe that um, that amount is incorrect? Yes, that is totally incorrect. Okay, and sir, are you asking for um, credit for direct payments that you made the mother? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, and sir, let me share my screen to show a copy of an affidavit of direct payments that you made. Um, so this shows that you think you paid $18,550. Is that correct? Ma'am. Yeah. Um, did you say yes, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, and you did that as of June 22nd, 2023. Yes, ma'am. And so, sir, are you asking that your child support be, um, that your judgment be taken in the amount of zero dollars as of March 26, 2024? Yes, ma'am. And, sir, what are these payments that you show listed on the affidavit of direct payments? What are they for? Child support. Okay. Um, and did you pay them to the mother directly? Um, some of them I did. Some of them was going straight to her daycare. As she stated, we had an agreement outside of the um, court order, and I was paying for her daycare. Um, I have those payments in a file on my phone um, as well. Okay, so some of the payments were for daycare costs? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you identify which ones? Um, all, really all of them, um, up until she left that school, which I believe was either, um, it was the end of 2022. Hold on, can I take a look and see? When um yeah. ah, the whiners have gotten me off the love boat. She left that school. Um <clears throat> she left that school um August of twenty twenty two. Okay. So any payments made after that was just directly to the mother? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and sir, um, is it correct that the mother sent you an affidavit of direct payments um, of 17550 Yes, she, she sent me that picture and told me that she sent it in. Um, do you, 
did you pressure or threaten her to try to um, get her to send in this affidavit of direct payments? Um, no, ma'am. I didn't even have my child then. Um, she got my child after that for Christmas. And then I again got my child on January 7th for a few months and brought her to Canada with me so she could spend time with me. And no, we've never had an issue of me giving my child back to her. Okay, sir. Um, so just to be clear, you're asking for a judgment of $0 as of March 26, 2024. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And if the judgment is taken in the amount of um, $16,217.55, are you in agreement to pay that off at $200 a month? Or are you asking for a different amount? Um, I would ask for a different amount, please, if it could be 100 if that were the case. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to tell the court, sir? Um, it's, it's very disheartening that this is going on. Um, she knows, we both know that I paid my dues to my daughter. I take very great care of my daughter. Um, she comes with me every break that she gets and um yeah like she knows i do my part on taking care of my daughter so yes ma'am that'll be all okay pass the witness next next witness please oh your honor i already called miss arno Um, do you want me to briefly recall her? <laughs> Not unless you have something. Uh, yes, no, I don't have anything else okay. to ask her. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the state rests. Thank you. This is an example of why judges get frustrated when the parties go outside the court and cut their own deal. You've got one order over here that the court's expecting people to follow you got an agreement over here it's completely different and people are just doing what they want to do and the court is sitting there going now what uh it's a mess this is not much of an exception judgment is taken in the amount of zero dollars Good luck to y'all, and you're free to leave. Thank you, John. Are you saying that he doesn't owe any money? That is That's correct. And is there a reason why he doesn't owe any money after he doesn't have any proof of anything that he's that he say, stated on that affidavit? Except an affidavit signed by you and one that's very consistent signed by him. And we don't believe you. Like there's no penalty for it's someone for that court document? I don't understand that. What'd you say, Quinn? He gets connected. Okay. Here's the entitlement coming in. Miss Arno, um, the judge has already made his ruling, um, so that's final. Um, so you can disconnect. Love, exciting and new. Well, there you have it. <clears throat> a rare day i was watching that although i did see the end so i i had an inkling it would work out but even as i was watching it, i was stressing out again and i could be wrong but i'm i'm basing i'm basing it on their demeanor and the way they testified and what they said i i believe this guy paid everything he was calm he was sincere he had the 
he had the, the the proof. She said he doesn't have any proof. The, the only proof we have, the only documentary proof that, that was presented that I saw in this hearing was that he's paid in excess of what you claim the, arrear, the arrears were. But he didn't do it through through the court, and I, he's stupid for that. He dodged a bullet. He got very lucky. Nine times out of ten, a guy will lose this and pay the 16000 again. Especially if he's not represented. But hallelujah. That's not what happened this time. I, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe he maybe he lied to him. I'm, I'm just my, my my gut is the same as the judge is here, and, and you go with the only evidence, I the only real evidence that's there. Her testimony was, oh no, I didn't uh her testimony, if you believe it, which I don't is her her testimony is oh no i just signed some some stuff to to basically perpetrate a fraud on the court because i was in a bad spot and i wanted to get my child back right there there's an admission of i don't i have i i uh, not that she said duress but because you know that's just like what she thought would sound good but that's not that that's not duress Dress is 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 uh you know is you're in you know fear of harm or something like that. What she what she called it duress, but what it was is convenience. She said, "Well, I I lie." She basically under oath said, "I lie for convenience to the judge," and to that extent, I agree. And you lied for convenience today in hopes that you could get this guy to double pay what he's already paid. And it's disgusting. And then she has the temerity to whine about it to the AG afterwards. I'm thinking, I mean, this isn't going to happen, but yeah, you know, you kind of just got caught being dishonest under oath to the court. Why don't you just shut up and go home? <laughs> I don't know. Of course, that all gets back to the facts. If if it turns out that the father's a big liar and she's telling the truth, uh, well, then I'm all wrong. I'm I'm just saying that the evidence before us in this particular hearing was to me uh, what seemed a very credible father versus a a mother who admitted that she has no credibility. And then the, the documentary evidence was that, yep, this has already been paid. Ah, ah, uh, yes. I'm getting much, much better, much, much better, but not, not, I'm not, I'm not all the way there yet, but better every day. Oh, it was rough, but thank you. Thank you all. All right. That's, that's what I had for the day. Thank you all for coming out. That was good fun. I can't believe it. I, I, I can't believe it. We've, we've got a, a father who won a contested hearing that could have gone the other way. Only in Texas. And only in certain parts of Texas. I mean, this wouldn't happen in, you know, Travis County or something. <laughs> Hell no. They just, they just lock him up. They, they lock him up for complaining about paying twice. All right. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon.